My name is Michael Weston. I used to be a spy. Until... No, wait, hang on. I... My name's Jason. I'm not a spy. I... I play games until we win. Now this week's game is a doozy. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's hard as hell, and it's based on the Terminator movie license. What game is it? <laughs> Journey to Silius. Before it became Journey to Silius, it was going to be another Terminator game, but the license got pulled and instead of an awesome T game, Sunsoft released it in its current form. But you already knew all that, I mean hell, the HVGN already went into great detail about it. What you don't know is that it's one of the more difficult games out there. Why? <laughs> For starters, you've got a limited number of lives and continues. Once you use all of them, the game is over. The physics in this game aren't your typical Nintendo physics. You don't have superior jumping control. In fact, your momentum keeps you moving in the direction you jump. You can only slow your momentum down, not stop it or reverse it. The enemies in this game take a lot of damage, and you have a limited supply of ammunition. Well, the regular handgun has infinite ammo, but your other weapons, while much stronger, share the same ammunition gauge. Every enemy has a pattern, making the game easier, but there are two problems. First, there are a ton of different enemies in this game, ranging from stationary to enemies that move and have some fucky firing patterns. Second, the only way you're gonna memorize some of these patterns is by taking a lot of damage. More damage, more death. There are two bosses in every level, a mini boss that gives you a weapons upgrade and a stage boss. Both of them are pretty relentless. The mini bosses don't really have much of a pattern other than how they fire. For the most part, they just move forward and shoot at you. The problem here is that they take a huge amount of damage to put down, and usually can only be shot in one specific location. And that location often requires that you jump and fire at the same time, making it a little more difficult. The regular bosses are also pretty difficult to take down until you learn their patterns. Every boss has a pattern, but guess what? You're probably going to take a lot of damage in the process. Alright, that's all well and good, but you're not here to learn how you're going to die. You're here to learn how to beat Journey to Silius, so here are my tips that are going to help you out. First, learn how the jumping mechanic works, and fast. Games like Mario, Mega Man, and Contra offer some fun jumping controls, but not so much with Silius. Your character jumps more realistically, and it's going to take a while to get used to. Next, get yourself a turbo controller, or work out your shooting thumb. Every enemy in the game takes a ton of shots to take down. Your thumb is going to get tired by the time you get to the third level. Pattern matching is essential here. Every enemy follows a pattern, and memorizing those patterns will make the game much easier. Why do you want to memorize them? because you've got very limited health and enemies aren't fond of dropping health power-ups. Unlike Mega Man, you can't force the same enemy to spawn over and over again just to get them to drop a health package. There are a few different weapons you can use in Journey to Silius. There's the standard handgun, which is your basic unlimited ammo weapon and acts a bit like the Mega Buster. Three shots at a time and it does minimal damage. While it's not the strongest gun in the game, it's probably the most useful since it's the one you're going to use after your other ammunition runs out. The shotgun isn't the most useful weapon in the world. It fires in three directions, but it fires slowly. While it could be useful against some of the bosses, it's really limited. The next weapon you'll acquire is the machine gun, and that's pretty useful. It fires in rapid succession, yes, just like a turbo controller, but it does kill enemies a little bit quicker. It's also a bit more powerful than the other guns, so you'll be able to take out the mini-bosses quicker than if you just used the regular handgun. The homing missile is only slightly more useful than the shotgun. You'll use it about one, maybe two fights, and that's about it. The laser rifle, while powerful, is limited by its slow firing speed and lack of ammunition. You'll need it against one boss in particular, but for the most part, you'll probably stick with the handgun. The grenade launcher is, hands down, the best weapon in the game. The only problem is that it eats up ammo like nobody's business. You only get it at the end of stage 4 though, so its usefulness is limited to the final two stages of the game. So now that you know all the little tricks of the game, let's get right down to business. Level 1. You'll encounter a lot of different enemies in this level, but they're all just very basic threats. A few bullets should take most of them out. The only real sticking points in this level are the timed jumps with the incoming missiles and these floating guys that fire a three-way shot. They're not terrible, but they can get annoying.
the mini boss here is a giant proton cannon that launches fire at you. His pattern is actually pretty easy to figure out. Start off by firing at him with your gun, jump over the first fireball, duck under the second one, and then immediately, quickly jump over the third fireball, then repeat. Get used to this pattern, because you'll see this boss again. From there, you'll take on the level boss, a helicopter that launches mini robots. This boss is pretty simple. Switch to the machine gun that you just acquired from the mini boss and watch for the robots that spawn out of the helicopter. Once you kill three of the robots, the helicopter will drop down and try to take you out itself. Your objective here is to, as the spooty one would say, hit the big glowing fuck me light on the front of the helicopter. The boss will shoot bullets, but they're easy to avoid once you realize that they don't really have a pattern. They're actually fired at different altitudes depending on your position. If you time it correctly, you should be able to fall into a pattern of jumping, firing, and ducking while avoiding all the bullets. The chopper should go down after about 20 shots or so. Now if you're new to the game, level 2 is going to piss you off, because you get to fall down a bunch of pits where you'll have no idea where any of the enemies are. You'll also have to contend with in-place turrets and these little balls that fire in a circle. They can be a little annoying. Another enemy you'll meet in this level are the slow-moving but deadly robots. They don't fire at first and they move in your direction at a very slow pace, however they can kill you pretty quickly if you don't kill them first, so start firing like a madman and take them down. The mini-boss in this stage is a large machine that moves forward slowly. Jump up and avoid his shots while shooting him in the eye. Do it quickly, otherwise you'll run out of time and he'll pound you into the side of the level. If you don't have any energy left in your homing missiles, the level boss can be pretty difficult since your regular gun takes upwards of 50 shots to take him down, but with the homing missiles, this boss is pretty easy. Easy being a relative term, of course, as the boss has several methods of attack. First, if you touch it, it'll hurt you, so you don't want to do that. Second, it fires out these missiles in an arc, usually at your last position, and finally he has a claw that extends that you must duck under if you don't want to get hit. The only way to take it down is to be extremely quick with your button mashing. The bullets he fires out don't really have a pattern, and the robot closes in on you and backs away in a somewhat random manner. Plus, life really gets difficult when he extends his claw. The best method of attack here is to just keep moving and take your shots when you can. You don't want to get pinned down in the corner, so moving around as much as you can to avoid his shots is your best method of beating him. Now, level 3 can be a bit tricky. While the platforming isn't too bad, it's the robots that are going to cause you a headache. You'll meet several new enemies in this level, and all of them are annoying. The only real advice I can give you here is to be patient, kill the spider robots, and move forward. The mini-boss is another story. The big blue walking hulk can be a pain in the butt. If you don't have any homing missiles left, you're probably going to regret it. Fire your homing missiles at him to take him down. Otherwise, be prepared to take some serious damage. Your normal handgun isn't going to cut it against this guy. For as much as a pain as the mini boss can be, the level boss isn't too bad. If you sprint to the right and lay prone, you'll never get hit. Of course, you're still going to need to figure out a way to hit the boss's weak spot. The only trick here is to jump up after the bottom laser is fired, but before the top laser fires. Jump up, fire your gun, and go prone. Repeat until the boss explodes. Level 4 has a lot of hazards and you really need to keep an eye out for them. Obviously there are robots that are trying to kill you, but there's also a ton of obstacles that are going to try and crush you. These pylons that try to crush you aren't too big of a problem if you know how to get by them. The ones earlier in the level will try to crush you before you walk under them, so you can set them off before you go past while the later ones won't try to crush you until you're directly under them, giving you ample time to sprint underneath. The mini boss is a pain though. The blue flying robot takes a ton of damage to take down, even if you've got the laser gun at full power. The only strategy here is to leap up and shoot the head over and over again. You're probably going to take some damage, unfortunately. Once you destroy his first form, his head will fly around the room shooting at you, so shoot it too. 
Honestly, I've never gotten past this robot without taking a good amount of damage, and that's a problem because the level boss is a pain. He has a really easy pattern to follow, but of course, you're probably gonna die a few times before you figure it out. The pattern goes like this. He'll fire a huge blue laser from the bottom, which you have to jump over. Then, a few frames later, he'll fire a bullet from the top, which exposes his weak point. All you have to do is jump over the large laser and fire a shot at the peak of your jump. Time it right, and your shot should hit the weak spot, while letting you avoid both the blue laser and the top shot. Now, if you don't have any ammunition left for the grenade launcher, this battle is going to take a long, long time. You're going to jump. A lot. Level 5, the final level. This one is significantly different from every other level in the game. There are no enemies here, not a single one. There are, however, a ton of different obstacles you need to get past, like timed lava flows, nearly unjumpable gaps, conveyor belts, and a screen that moves at its own pace, killing you if you get trapped. Believe me, there are some parts of this level that are just going to drive you nuts. To get past the lava pits, you're going to need to keep close to the right edge of the screen to set off the falling lava traps and give yourself enough time to jump across the pits before the screen forces you to move. Getting past the conveyor belts can also be a bit of a problem. Once again, you need to be at the front of the screen and have split second reaction times to get past this part. Now there's no mini boss to get past in this stage, in fact there's no enemies at all so there's no reason to use your weapons, and believe me, you're gonna need all the ammunition you can save for the final two bosses. Yeah, I said final two bosses. This game doesn't joke around with its ending, you wanna beat the game, you gotta beat two bosses. The first boss is a big spaceship. There are two points you need to blow up on it, one in the front, one in the back. The ship has two green orbs that fire in 45 degree increments, which is pretty easy to avoid, but be careful of the ship itself because touching the underside will kill you. Now I know the game designers were going for a crushing type of death, but even if you jump up and hit your head, instead of just getting a pounding headache, you die. The boss itself is pretty easy since the two weak points can be taken out with a handgun rather easily. The only real trick is figuring out the timing of the ship and how long you need to stay laying prone before you can bounce back up. After you get back up, you need to avoid the flames, then you need to go prone again to avoid the ship, bounce back up, and hit the weak spot. It's not as bad as it sounds, it just takes a lot of trial and error to get right. Eventually though, you'll take down this boss and move on to the second one, the android. The android itself can be a bit of a problem, but he's really not that difficult. You just need to have exceptional reaction skills to take him down. The idea is simple. Jump and shoot the boss in the head until he comes close enough to hit you. He'll duck down and try to punch you. As soon as he ducks, you need to jump over him, run to the opposite side of the screen, and shoot him in the head. Since he doesn't have any other method of attack, there's not much to him. You just need to time your jumps carefully, otherwise you'll get punched or end up jumping directly into him. Both of those options aren't very good. Keep up your jumping pattern and eventually... Congratulations, you've just beaten one of the most difficult games on the NES. Not much of an ending though, huh? No, especially not when compared to the movie it was based off of. <laughs> That's alright though, it's still one of the best games. It's very difficult, but very filling. Filling. Speaking of filling, anyone else in the mood for pizza?
Every enemy has a pattern, making the game a little easier 